YouTube, this is Robert Ness 816, and I have two PlayStation consoles. Why do I have two PlayStation consoles? Well, because I am going to make a video in the future about replacing the lasers on your original PlayStation. So, if this replacement laser is looking a little bit funny to you, it's because I've already replaced the laser. Um, that's right, so the only thing that's on here is the original top cover. Um, from the laser. This is the actual original one that uh, was in the console and I just kind of swapped out the top cover and that's that. So after I pop these two open, which one has the replacement laser in it? You actually can't tell, can you? This one has the replacement laser in it. It used to have a metal spindle like that on it there, but the newer ones I guess are this rubbery plastic base, whatever. Um, so why did I replace the laser on this one? Because this particular console would run fine for about an hour and a half and then it would start to freeze on me. Or it would run fine perfectly throughout, you know, whenever I was playing a game, but occasionally it would start to freeze. And, um, yeah, it would turn into a big pain in the ass. So I replaced the laser on this particular console and now it runs perfectly. Um, this spindle assembly was also making a knocking noise, which I think was due to a worn out motor, maybe. Um, that could have also have been why maybe the laser was having trouble reading, but um, ever since I installed the new uh, laser assembly, this console is much, much quieter. You just hear the disc spooling up, and you hear the uh, laser moving around, and that's really it. You don't hear anything else. The knocking sound is totally gone. And, um, yeah, it runs perfectly. Uh, this particular console here will also be getting a replacement laser. This one runs perfectly fine, except for the, um, uh, what do you call it? The uh, laser, um, God, it's not bias, it's not gain, it's the uh, laser intensity on it, which is the tiny little adjustment screw right here, needed to be turned up to a voltage that I'm not really comfortable with. Um, I think it's supposed to be at like 12 millivolts, and this one needs to be at, I think, 15 or 16 millivolts, so kind of high, I think. Uh, it does run fine. It plays games for as long as I have the system running, but um, I would still like to get the, um, the laser replaced on it. It is also making a little bit of a knocking sound, too, like this one used to. So I figured, you know, whatever, it could definitely benefit from it. Um, so both of these are early 1001 models, which is the uh, the one with the little headphone jacks in the back. These are the the ones that people are, um, I shouldn't say going crazy over, but these are regarded as the audiophile models. Um, so on eBay, these go for a higher price than normal PlayStations do because of that audiophile um, following that I guess they have or, or, or nickname. Um, so how did I get these? This one I got for free, this one I got in a garage sale for 15 bucks with a bunch of games and a controller and everything, so yeah. Um, that kind of shows you how PlayStations are, uh, everywhere else but eBay. Um, realistically, people have PlayStation consoles, they want to get rid of them because most people don't play on the original hardware anymore, they use other PS2, PS3, uh, they emulate it, whatever, um... So yeah, owning a console like this is kind of mute unless you're like me and you're stubborn and you like playing on the original hardware. So for me, I actually do not own a PS2. I own the PS1 because it is what I had the most fun on as a kid. So yeah, that's basically it. Um, so is it worth it to buy a new laser for a console like this? Uh, it is because in my experience with the PlayStation console, they are not the most reliable system ever. Uh, talking about the original launch consoles, but all the consoles afterwards are uh, much better. Um, I mean, that's just the nature of the beast, so it's like everything in this hobby, where you have sought-after consoles where, you know, people like them, like the Turbo Duo, that's a sought-after console that breaks all the time, these break all the time, uh, the Game Gear breaks all the time, NES, you know, whatever, the Model 1 Sega CD. Sought-after consoles are not always reliable in this hobby. Uh, so anyways, getting back on topic, I will be posting a video about uh, replacing these. It will be very easy, very simple, and it'll be hopefully in one take. Um, 
I mean, yeah. So what this laser is, the reason why the top on this one is gray instead of black is because this is a direct replacement for a uh, PlayStation 1, the little tiny guys. Um, that's where these lasers come from. They're all basically the same thing. It's just Sony changed the top cover and the ribbon cable on some models. So this particular uh, replacement does come with a uh, rather long extension cable, which you can use on all of the other models of PlayStation, which will need this cable. As far as swapping out the top covers on other models, um, I am not sure because I have a, uh, a 9001 as well. However, that console works perfectly, so I'm not going to bother replacing the laser on that one. But these um, all needed new lasers, so I will go into depth as to how to replace the top cover on here and make your PlayStation into a fully functional, uh, fully reliable console. And yes, these play FMV perfectly, so you won't have any issues. They load perfectly fine, they just work. So stay tuned, guys.